today we are going to start looking at section 2 of the principles of business csec syllabus and section 2 entitled internal organizational environment now this section for the syllabus is i can say a little self-explanatory to a certain point there are not many concepts they have to grasp and remember it's pretty much pretty much self-explanatory but i'll go through it still you know with a fine tooth comb and probably you can get a better understanding of a lot of the content that is here in this section all right so we're going to start with section two objective number one describe the functions of management describe the function of management some of these words here on your right most of y'all should know already but i will try to put them in a business yeah, business perspective so, I mean, one dictionary search, you should be able to understand a lot of these words, but let's try and put them in a business perspective so we can see if you can better understand how they are, they actually the work in the world of work. So let's look at the first one here, planning. Now, as a manager or the management team, your responsibility is, of course, to plan. You can have different lengths. In your planning different term plans you can have a short-term plan a medium-term plan a long-term plan you know normally the short-term plan is within the next month or two medium might be a year to two years long term would be like five years and out so your job as the management team or the manager is to conduct planning so you're going to do a roadmap you're going to map out where the company is going to be going in the future either in the near future the medium future or in the Far future so this can include things like you know maybe introducing a new product line maybe you know training the staff maybe building a new plant or something like that but planning is essential for any organization without planning the organization have no idea where it's going so of course you need to plan ahead in order for you to know where you're going so you can monitor and you know have an easier task at it so planning is just about looking ahead, looking for the future and seeing where the business is going and how you're going to get there. Now, organizing now. Now, organizing as a management team means that the management team now have to bring all of his resources together. You have to put everything in place to carry out, you know, the plan that they would have put forward. So they have to build, you have to bring the proper staff. You have to bring the proper resources. You have to buy what you need to help the business to reach where they are going. So organizing means you have to put everything in place that would help the company, the business to achieve the plans or the goals that it has set before it. So that's what organizing is all about. The management team is responsible for bringing the right people, the right resources together in order to carry out the plan for that business. Coordinating, of course, coordinating means that you want to put all the moving parts in one direction in the direction that the company wants to go so of course as a management team you have to be able to okay pull accounts from here pull marketing here pull them together and then help them to accomplish the goal or the plan that you would have had for the got for the business so coordinating means that the management team will have to make sure everything is running smoothly Okay, you have to bring all the departments together, make sure all departments are working together as one to help the company to achieve whatever goal they have set forward. Of course, staffing, self-explanatory means that, you know, the management is responsible for hiring. Management is the one responsible for hiring the right people for the right job in a timely manner. So that's staffing in a nutshell. Staff, hire the staff, staffing. Okay, directing is similar to coordinating, but directing now is where... The management team or the manager actually gives directives, give instructions, tell you, okay, I want you to do that. I want you to do that. So directing is where they give the instructions as to what they want to be done. Just like in a movie, you know, the director is the one who tells the actors, okay, this is what I want from you. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to go here, go there. The same thing with the management. The management. management is the one who directs, who tells the rest of the company what to do how to maybe how to do it but there might be a little you know a little micromanaging there but 
tells you where I want you to go, how I want you to do it, that kind of thing. Directing, show you where to go. Delegating, on the other hand, delegating is where the management gives, you know, certain authority to maybe some subordinates. So, I mean, you may be a manager and you have a supervisor under you. Or you might have a regular, you know, rank and file member under you. And you give them the authority to carry out certain responsibilities. Delegate. So, you don't do everything yourself. You say, okay, you. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. You have the authority to do this. Set up this. Run with it. Go ahead. That's delegating. Sometimes in the schools that you go to, you might see the principal delegate certain responsibilities to maybe the year head, the block head, the farm supervisor, the deputy. Delegating. So the principal cannot do everything by him or herself. They have to give other people authority to do certain things, to carry out certain objectives. Maybe to discipline, might be to you know organize a subject, maybe to run a block, run a class, whatever. But delegating is where the person who is in charge gives somebody under them the authority to carry out certain objectives or certain directives. Motivating means that the management is responsible for making sure that their staff and their workers are encouraged to do what they need to, that needs to be done. They're not there in the job all bored and dull and not willing to do anything. No. The management is supposed to keep that fire burning for the workers. Make them want to come every day. Give them something to make them want to come to work every day. Keep them hyped. Keep them excited about the job. So that's what motivating is all about. You have to get, you have to reach the person wherever you can. Some people are motivated by money. So maybe a raise or something like that would encourage them. They would give them more you know, more incentive to come to work. Some people are motivated from within, intrinsic motivation. So maybe management giving them a certain, delegating a certain task to them, make them feel a little bigger, make them feel a little more, you know, empowered. So whatever it takes, it could be external, internal, intrinsic motivation. The management must know their staff and know what makes them tick, what keeps them engaged and then execute that. So if it's money, you might give them a raise, you, know, you might give them a little something, something. If it's intrinsic motivation, you might give them some job that empowers them and keep them engaged into the company. So they can call the company us. You know, some, some people like to say, them, us versus them. You don't want that in a business. You want everybody to say, you know, this is our company. This is all about us. So you have to motivate them towards that end goal. Controlling, of course, you can't just leave everybody, you know, to do what they want, can I give everybody free reign all the time? So of course, management still have to be in control of a lot of aspects of the business. They have to control the marketing angle. They have to control the financing. They have to control what the the, the, the staff does, that kind of thing. So you still need to have a little, you know, a little leash still to rein back in, you know, workers if they gone too far. So you can't just leave everything to somebody and you just check out. No. Management still have to be the ones who are there pulling the strings, so to speak. Still have to be in control. You can't let the ship just steer itself or go at the mercy of the wind. You still need to direct the company or the business wherever you want it to go. You still have to maintain control. You have to hold on to the reins. Now, what you have control, what you can do is either you know hold on to the reins in a in a loose manner, which is you give people a little more freedom, or you can hold on to the reins tightly, which is you basically controlling most of everything. And of course, communicating. You, you, no business can really reach anywhere without effective communication. If management or if managers cannot communicate, that can be the death knell and that can be detrimental to any business, any organization. You have to be able to communicate your ideas, your goals, your vision to everybody in the business so that they can buy into it and everybody work together as a cohesive unit to maximize your, your, your organization's profits. So you have to be able to talk to your workers. You can't just be brash and rude and obnoxious to your, to your staff. Or you might get some pushback. You don't want that. You want to be able to communicate effectively. You know, you talk so that you can you go down on the floor, you go down on the level and you talk to, you know, the rank and file, you talk to the cashier, you talk to the janitor, you talk to everybody. You, 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 you have a rapport with them. You don't want to be seen as stiff and, you know, standoffish and you know you send a message and it's not well received you know you don't want that you want effective efficient communication in order to get the company to stay rolling 
So communication, communi effective communication is one key function of management. So those are some of the major functions of management right there in a nutshell. Now, now those are the functions of management. What are the responsibilities of management? So you have the function of management and then you have the responsibilities of management. So let's look at these ones one at a time. Responsibilities of management. Of course, you have responsibilities to various stakeholders. Stakeholders are anybody who is affected by your business operation. Anybody can be a stakeholder. Once you are affected in some way, shape or form by the business's activities, you are a stakeholder. So the government, society, customers, employees, the owners, all of those are stakeholders within a company. Not to be confused with shareholders. Shareholders mean that you own part of the business, you have shares. But stakeholders simply means that you are affected by whatever the business is doing in some way, shape or form. So the first one, the owners and the shareholders. Naturally, as management, as the manager, your responsibility towards the owners would be, of course, to maximize profit. That's your responsibility. Maximize profit so that you can have um you have you can have the best possible return on the investment by the shareholders or the owners. So your main responsibility to the owners and the shareholders is to maximize profits. Okay? The syllabus states that the syllabus has something else for that part also. Apart from maximizing profit, you have to do it in an efficient manner. Okay, see that efficiency. You have to do it in an efficient manner. So you can maximize profit, but you have to do it in an efficient manner so that the the CEO and the owner and them can have, you know, good returns on the investment. I don't want to invest in something and then, you know, the I invest 10,000 and all of a sudden start losing. No, I want to invest 10,000 today. You maximize profit, give me back maybe you know, 15, 20 down the line. You know, so the main responsibility of the owners and the shareholders by management's responsibility to them is to maximize profit. Of course, management also have responsibilities to the people who work for them, the employees. And this, of course, is, they, they have different paths to this. So for the owners, clearly, for, for the employees, first, you have to, you're, you're responsible for giving them a good quality working condition, proper working conditions. That's one of your responsibilities to your workers. You have to make sure that they're working in the best possible environment. You don't want to be working in a place that smells. You don't want to be working in a dirty place. You don't want to be working in a toxic atmosphere, toxic environment. You want to be working in a nice, clean, conducive environment. So that's management's responsibility. If you have bad blood among employees, then it's management's responsibility to quash that. You need to have a nice, enlightened, you know, a nice, cohesive work environment you don't want any so it's, a, it's both mental and physical workplace conditions mental meaning you don't want any toxicity within the workplace people cussing each other you know nobody getting out you don't want that nor do you want physical yeah you know broken lamps broken windows ac in working place hot 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 lot of noise you don't want that so management responsibility to the employees is good working condition Another obvious responsibility of management to the employees, of course, pay. You have to pay the people what they're worth. You have, you can't underpay people. You have to give them the money that they deserve. So your responsibility is to give the people a fair salary, a fair wage. You do not cheat anybody, you don't undercut anybody. So management responsibility to the employees is also to give them fair wages. You don't want to undercut anybody. You don't want to cheat anybody out of what they are worth. Okay, so we have here employees, for example, providing adequate working conditions, as I just mentioned. And, of course, good working relationships. So we said that working condition includes both mental and physical. What else responsibility they have towards employees? Training. Okay, training. So management is responsible for making sure the employees are up to date and all the inner workings of the company. Sometimes you might hire somebody, they have a certain skill set, okay, that's good. 
But as time goes on, the company tend to change, you know, change the way they do things and stuff like that. So you don't know, expect them to go back to always be aware of what the company's next move is. Management now have to go and train the people, train their workers in whatever new area they're about to introduce. So you have to keep your staff ready and trained. That's your responsibility also. You also have to maintain good, as I said up there, communication, effective communication and human relations with your employees. You don't want any bad blood in the company. You don't want any misunderstandings. So you have to be able to maintain good communication. So those are the responsibilities of management to the employees. What about to the customers? Management do have responsibilities towards the customers, such as providing the goods or service in a timely manner in a, at a fair or reasonable price. You don't want to gouge anybody eye out. So management needs responsibility to the consumers is to provide a fair price for a good quality product. And of course, you need a clean environment to conduct business in also. So you don't want to be going into a supermarket with, you know, floor wet, stuff just thrown all about. You don't want that. You need a nice, clean environment to conduct business, and that's up to management to do. So two things that they, they're responsible for the customers, a fair price for good quality product. Also, a good and clean environment to conduct business. Those are responsibilities that management have towards customers. Government. Government. Now, for government, you know, every business is supposed to pay tax. So clearly, management responsibility to the government is to pay them what they do, pay them what they owe. You don't want any tax evasion going on here. So management must be able to pay the government the taxes that they are owed. Also, they are supposed to follow all the regulations and rules that the government has put in place. That's the responsibility of management also, follow all the labor laws, all the safety regulations, all those rules and laws and regulations that the government put in place, management must ensure that the company or the business is following all those things to a T. So if you're supposed to have a hard hat, of course you need to have a hard hat available for your workers. That's part of the safety regulations. You need fire extinguishers, you need to have that. They say overtime is how much ever money you're supposed to get, pay the people in a proper overtime because by law that's what it's for. You have sick leave or whatever, so you need to follow all the rules and regulations set out by the government. Apart from paying taxes, you have to follow the rules and regulations. That's your responsibility towards the government. And of course, to society as, as a whole, management must make sure that the company is being a good corporate citizen. What is a corporate citizen? A good corporate citizen? That's when a company is doing good for society. For example, if you know you're getting a lot from society, you know, sponsor something, sponsor child's, you know, children's sport day, you know, sponsor some a queen show, sponsor, give scholarships, you know, plant a tree, you know, adopt an area, keep it clean and nice as a company. As society is giving you so much, you should give back to society. Management responsibility is to give back to society. Make sure that you're a good corporate citizen. Make sure you're not, you're not polluting the environment. Make sure you're not destroying the environment. You know, you're keeping it nice, healthy, giving back. So for society, management must make, ensure that the company is not just taking, 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 and just giving bad stuff in return, you know, pollution. and like, No, you want to give back to society, you know, a scholarship, a sponsorship, whatever. Give back to society as a company or corporation. That's a good corporate citizen. So management should ensure that all of that is going down with their company. So that in a nutshell is the responsibilities uh, of management and the functions of management. Now let's look at section, well, objective number four in the syllabus. Interpret a simple organizational chart. Now, each, all organizations would have some form of organizational chart that shows how, who is in charge of whom and that kind of thing. That shows how the, the, the workforce is laid out in the organization. So that's what the organizational chart 
basically represents the workforce and how it is laid out and who is in charge of who and that kind of thing. So let's look at some simple organizational chart to discuss just two easy concepts, two simple concepts, the chain of command and the span of control, the chain of command and the span of control. So let's dig into those two quickly. So we have a simple organizational chart right here, organizational chart, you have the CEO, chief, the um, chief executive, you have the production manager, the finance manager, personal manager, marketing manager. Those are the simple, simple charts. Then you have a, a larger chart that expands to show the other members of the organization. You have the chief executive officer again. Under him, you have the production manager. You have the finance manager, personal manager, marketing manager. Within all these departments, you have other representatives under there. So you have the junior manager. And under that, you have staff. For based on you know the, the department so this is how an organizational chart looks a very simple one now we are going to be looking at you know the span of control and the chain of command span of control what is span of control span of control can be defined as you know the as it says span the width or uh, the, the the reach that one person has within the organization so for example, we're looking at the chief executive officer here. Now that one person is basically in charge of one manager, two manager, three managers, four managers, five, six, seven managers. So that's what we call a wide span of control because one person has control over up to seven managers. So the span of control tells you the extent to which one person is in charge of others. The reach that one person has within the organization. So in this case, you have a wide span of control because the chief executive is in charge of all of these people. So every last one of these people answer to that one person, the chief executive officer. That's a wide span of control. Then you have a narrow span of control where the executive officer, the CEO, is in charge of basically two managers who are in turn are in charge of two more managers who then are in turn in charge of our next two managers. So these two answer to this one person, these two answer to this one person, and this one person answers to the chief executive. Okay, so that's what you call a narrow span of control. So this one person is not going to have seven people answering, you have to answer to him or her. This one person, you'll get a report from one, two managers, and you understand the inner workings of the business. So you have a narrow span of control, you have a wide span of control. Again, span of control means it shows who is in charge of whom. So that's what the span of control is all about. Now, when you're talking about the chain of command, no, we're talking about we're talking about who answers to who. So, for example, you have this here, line management. This right here is the chain of command. So this person answers to that person, who in turn answers to this person, who answers to this person. That's the chain of command. For example, in a school, you have an obvious chain of command. The principal, then you have the deputy, then you might have the a blockhead of the fifth form, then you might have other senior teachers, write down, write down, write down to the students. Of course, students are going to be the last, you know, on the, the school chain of command. You know, you, I mean, you're not in charge of anybody. But line, the, the, the chain of command shows who is in charge of whom, who answers to whom. Just like the military, there's a chain of command in the military. Okay, you have the admiral, the president, then you have the admirals, the generals, and they come right down, right down, right down to the private. That's what you call the chain of command. You know, instructions can come down the chain of command. They tend to come down from the chain of command. They tell you, they tell somebody, tell somebody, tell somebody, to tell somebody what to do. So the, the information comes down the chain of command normally. All right. So we have other examples of, you know, organizational charts here. In the marketing man, yes, some. So, for example, look at this chart. This chart shows that the managing director is the boss, but he's in charge of three. But these three are on the same level. So, the marketing manager is not in charge of the production manager. I don't answer to the production manager or the HR manager. They are all on the same level. I call it lateral relationship. So, they are all on the same level. 
chain of command goes up so you have the managing director so all these three answer to this person right here but these three are on the same level then you have the lateral staff and reporting relationships so you can see the whole web right here of what is going on all right so you have some some simple then you have some complex organizational chats all right so an assignment i tend to give my students in pob class is to draw a chat to show the organization of your school so you have the principal vice principal heads of departments special teachers secretaries maintenance you know laboratory technicians all those things come right down so that is how the you can see both a chain of command who answers to who and then you can see the span of control within such an organization okay so this is an exa a real life example of management at the, the Trinidad um, Cement and you can see the group ex chief executive, the general manager. So the general manager answers to the executive, the operations, human. So this is a wide span of control right here because this one person is responsible for one, two, three, four, five, six. But all of these are on the same level. All of them are on the same level okay and now this one the human resource manager doesn't really have anybody under their command so there is no chain of command for this the, the human resource manager or there's no span of control because they don't answer to it nobody answers to them they are their own you know little section but the operations manager is in charge of the production manager engineering service and the quarry manager so these three answer to this person who will answer to this person who answers to this person same thing marketing manager they have one, two, three departments under their purview. Planning, material, finance, they don't have anybody under their, their, their watch. So that's chain of command and span of control right there in a nutshell. You can see it graphically and you can understand if you try to use your school as an example of those things. So this is basically it for these sections in the syllabus. They are very, like I said, self explanatory and they are clear so that's it for six objectives one and one two and four one two three and four all of them okay because three organizational chat matches into four okay so that's it for these things the next video will be based on the characteristics of a good leader again most of it is pretty much self-explanatory so i can go through it rather quickly all right, so that's it for that for now. So thanks for watching, listening. Please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when a fresh video has been uploaded.